And one of the things that I've noticed personally, just within my own life, after I was saved, knowing that there's certain music and songs and things that I know that are just bad, when I would listen to those songs anyways, even though I knew they were bad, it would always cause me or lead me into other sins. Always. And it took a while before I can see the pattern happening. Because even when I was trying to do things right and trying to do, you know, and, and getting rid of other sins, I would catch myself and I would think back and go, you know what? I knew I shouldn't have restarted listening to that music again because when I did that, all of a sudden I started getting into other things. Oftentimes it's things that the music's talking about or it's things that were related when you're listening to music because it ties in events and, and memories and other things and, and just there's so much to it. There's so much to it. It's not just completely harmless. But to demonstrate even from the scripture of how powerful music can be, we have this story in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And of course, the story is the story of King Saul when he wasn't right with God. When the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and, and rested upon King David, before he was king, of course, Saul, the, the, the Lord then was troubling Saul with an evil spirit. And the reason why he was doing that is because he's trying to get Saul's attention because Saul was a believer in the Lord. Saul was a saved individual and he was going down the wrong path and God was trying to get him back and he had made some bad choices and God is, is you know, troubling him and vexing him with this evil spirit. But the, the goal is going to be for the repentance of Saul to get right with God, right? Saul should have been grieved by being troubled by this evil spirit. He should have been, man, this is, something's not right. I need, to do, you know, I need to fix this problem. And he goes to his counselors, so we're going to read that in the story. But the counsel they give him is like taking a drug to fix a problem where it's going to mask the symptoms for a while, but it doesn't go to the root of the problem. Right? When you have a headache, you want to figure out why do you have a headache. You don't want to just take Tylenol to just, well, I'm going to temporarily make the headache go away. I mean, if you have a headache because you're dehydrated, well, the headache's not going to ultimately go away until you rehydrate yourself. You've got to fix the problem. Because as soon as that Tylenol wears off, guess what? That headache's going to come back. It's going to come back even worse. Fix the real problem. Don't mask the symptoms. What Saul does here is he masks the symptoms of not being right with God, but he does so in a way by using music. And this demonstrates the power that this music has against an evil spirit from the Lord. Look at verse number 14. The Bible says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubled So they knew this. They knew this is from God. They knew it's this evil spirit from the Lord. And they say to Saul, in verse 16, Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So that'll fix you right up. We'll have this guy with a cunning, he's a real good player on a harp. A harp's a good instrument, right? We already know that, that this is a good instrument. It's the right thing. And they end up getting David. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So is this something that actually happened or not? Do we believe as Bible believers that there was an evil spirit from the Lord that was troubling Saul? Do you believe that? I believe that. I believe it was real. I believe there was an evil spirit from the Lord troubling Saul. Do you believe that that spirit departed when David played this instrument with his music and that Saul was actually refreshed for it? I believe that happened. And it was the result of the music that David played. Do you think now David was playing good music or bad music? I think he was probably playing good music. He's using an instrument that we know is approved. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the instrument. There's nothing wrong with the harp. He was playing this. It doesn't say anything about him singing or lyrics. It just say, it talks about him playing. The music was enough to cause the spirit, the evil spirit to leave. I think this is an example of good music driving away an evil spirit. Now, that wasn't the right solution for Saul but the reason why I'm pointing this out is to demonstrate the power that music has spiritually. Spiritually. So if the right music has that type of power to drive away an evil spirit, doesn't it hold or wouldn't it at least make sense that the wrong music can attract 
evil spirits can bring in bad things. You know, instead of doing good, it can, it can actually do... I believe that wholeheartedly. And this is an example of why I believe that to be true in addition to just other anecdotal evidence and seeing it playing out in life, right? Which, I, again, I'm not saying that that is the primary source of my evidence, but when you start to see these patterns and you're applying biblical principles and you can see this stuff in real life, I think it, it still stands to reason that, that that does and can happen. And I say all of this just to warn you that the type of music, even if you can say, well, I don't find anything wrong with these lyrics. Well, is it music that's of the world? And should we be loving the things of the world? I mean, are these guys saved? Do you even know if they're saved? Do they go to church? I mean, is there any reason to think that these guys are saved? Do they have any testimony of salvation at all? And not only that, I, I wouldn't even stop at that. I mean, just, be, just because someone may be saved, if they're just living a completely unrighteous life, I mean, are you still going to really want to be following that person and listening to them and being entertained by that person and everything else? You know, there's some people who would claim that Elvis Presley was saved. I don't know that I even buy that, but there's at least a testimony out there that he did, you know, get saved. But a womanizer, a drug addict, a, you know, this guy that's abusing alcohol and he's singing songs like, like My Way, who, who uh, in the song itself says that, that he you know, he's, he's doesn't have the words of one who kneels. Talking about one who kneels down to God and prays, like, I did things, my, that whole song's about, well, I did it my way, right? And taking pride that, hey, I'm not like these people who kneel down and pray to God and do things God's way, I did it my way. And that's what that song's all about. So yeah, you could say, yeah, but he sang these gospel songs and everything else. Yeah, but he also sang that garbage too. Yeah. 